Hello audience, my name is Isaac Gutierrez and I will be your dungeon master today. And with me as always is Jacob as Max Starport and Barkus as himself, Barkus Barrel. And we at Bardock Logs welcome you to The Great Kara Escape. Episode 2. And I'll just stand at the door close and wait. Because I can hear him from the other side, but mm -hmm. he can't hear me. Yep, you hear him immediately start trying to change it to 200. No. We're gonna wait, see what he does. Um, I am going to kind of yank on my chains a little bit. <laughs> yeah! See how sturdy they are? The chains themselves seem to be like average manacles, anything else you would find. Uh, I'll definitely say that the... Even though they're movable and you can like move the chair and stuff like that, and the table, it it's like interwoven, like the, the manacle is like interwoven into the table as if it's like part of it. And it's a very... I'll, I'll, uh, it, this is called ironwood. It's basically like steel, but like uh, a special type of magical wood. I'm gonna look for a loose nail, screw, um, paper clip, anything I could potentially use to pick a lock. All right. Um, give me a perception check. Okay. I'm good at that. Nah, never mind. Seven. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's okay. Because this thing was literally such a low DC, it was only five. So you still technically beat it. Oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there is, uh, I'm gonna give you uh, a few different little things scattered about. I won't give you that much because you only rolled a seven, but I'll give you the base stuff. Basically, uh, there are lanterns either side, oil lanterns. There are, um, I would say maybe one or two rat bones, not, uh, not sharpened, but you could sharpen them. And other than that, uh, maybe you can, you can see out the window, maybe there might be a twig or two. Okay, I'm gonna scoot my chair over to the rat bone, kind of kick it towards me. I guess I'll try to pick it up between my feet and then get it between my teeth and pick the lock. Or uh, first, I would file it against the table. Oh, oh, I mean, do on. I hear him? Let me, let me, let me go change the order. Of that. <laughs> scoot over. Yes. Pick it up with my feet. Well, you do have your left hand is free. Only your right hand is uh, oh, manacled okay. to it. Yep. So I guess I didn't say that. My bad. Uh, your left hand is free. Right hand is manacled. Okay, I pick it up, and I'll just file it against the bottom of the table. Try I'll try to be subtle about it. And then if someone comes in, I'll just, like, tuck it in my pocket. All right, Barkus, you, you hear this happening? You hear this, exactly. Um, <laughs> and then immediately just, son of a, and then rubbing against the table. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, it's a dungeon. They're like, they're like guards patrolling up and down this little hall, making sure no of the other prisoners get away. Uh, I'm gonna point to one of them. Come with me. Come inside. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he comes uh, up behind I have you. A question. Yeah. The rat bone was. You said it was by the window. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna if 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 they come in, I'm just gonna immediately tuck it in my pocket and then look out the window, just pretend to be like. Uh, admiring the scenery. <laughs> give, give me a, uh, a performance check as you try to be like nonchalantly like, oh, look out here. <laughs> oh, I'm rolling terrible. Six. <laughs> it is the most, as you walk in, Barkus, it is the most like, oh man, look, a window. <laughs> Dude, I, I just imagine it's at like street level, so I just see like feet going by and I get splashed in, in the face with some mud or something. Like a little bit, yeah. You're like, you're looking out and it's like someone looks over and just like kicks some water in your face. <laughs> you, you, you even almost fall back onto the table. You're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, uh, I knew you'd come back. So, 200 uh, gold then, I assume that. There is a guard behind him. 200? Is that something? Yes. Yeah. Shake my head, left and right. <laughs> No, not two, 200. No, no. Oh, look at the guard. Can you check him real quick? For what? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, 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 for a moment of like, <laughs> sorry, that for what wasn't from the guard, that was from me, and then it quickly clicked. Sorry, that was not the guard, that was me. Uh, he starts patting you down real quick, Mac. Uh, I'm just gonna do... <laughs> Could I potentially shift it, uh... I'm gonna be watching just, as it happens. Yeah, I'm gonna be just true. staring mind, at the, the entire time. All right, so I'm gonna give you two options, Mac. You can do a sleight of hand to try to show me uh, how well you hit it, versus this guard, it's an average guard, not too hard. Or you can uh, do that. I have plus eight. 
Oh, uh, I got the other option. Uh, I was gonna say, or you could do a performance check and do kind of like a, <laughs> uh, that one magic fucking movie where like they're doing it in front of the guards, like flipping about. <laughs> I got a twenty-six. Easy. All right. Let's check this guard and no, pff, yeah, he doesn't find it. He doesn't find the bone. Uh, all good, sir. Has the modifier to be able to find that. Absolutely not. <laughs> Unless he got a nat twenty. That, that, I guess that would work. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, yeah, no, uh, pretty much you. Yeah. Hey, hey there. Listen, I, I know I'm, it's extremely hard to keep your hands off of me, but uh, I prefer the company of women. Kind of just sighs and turns to the uh, to Barkus. Uh, he doesn't appear to have anything on him, sir. Thank you. See, I, now I get a good view of these. Uh, I look outside, feet. You know, <laughs> maybe. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I like that. <laughs> Can you bring two plates of food? Make sure that they're all cut. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, make, you. make sure you bring a fork to uh, have a eating disability. Uh, uh, you know the rules. No utensils. Yes, sir. Why comes pre-cut? Yes, sir. And he runs off to get you guys your pre-cut meals. I'll close the door. Sit back down. I don't have this stuff with me this time. I have it outside. Okay. So you are. Uh, uh, I'm gonna like continue, kind of. It, it, when I file it, does it make a loud noise? Yeah, it's it's a pretty okay, like. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a pretty obvious like force you have to put into it. Okay. Okay, never mind then. Uh, so two hundred gold piqued your interest, I assume. Oh. Is that why you came back in here? Not at all. The reason why I came back in here. No. You think, you think, uh, what, 150? My services, they are worth a, a, a reasonable sum. Uh, so your services versus the fines you have to pay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you both two, uh, two points of information. One, Mac, I would say, um, you, you get the feeling that he's not gonna budge, but... God damn, does 50 gold sound like a nice little fee for your, your stuff. Barkus, you could easily get a thousand gold to pay this man, and his fees would only be 20 gold. <laughs> that's the only- I'm not gonna- I'm not trying to tell you how to put it, I'm just saying that's the information you guys have. Continue. Yeah. Yeah, 150? That's- that was the turning point for you? Alright, I understand. No, no, Everyone no, 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 no. Your fines will be subtracted from your fee. Okay, so like, like one forty-nine or something. Twenty-five. Twenty-five is my fee. Mm-hmm. That is so how I, much get, pay I get one twenty. Will you pay me twenty? No. What? Excuse me. Pardon me. What exactly did I do that's so um so terrible? Property damage. What property did not damage any property? I didn't. I didn't start the fight either. You jumped out the window. The window was already. All that adds up. There was a little. There was a little cute little uh, boy in the <laughs> seat, and uh, he threw a mug at me, and it went through the window. I can't help that. I talked to every patron in there. Yeah, and yeah, none of them lied. That's what you're telling me. I know when people are. There's lying. no liars in the tavern. No, there are liars. Just not good ones, as I stare at it. No, I mean, I'm a good liar. You didn't even know I had, I mean, like, um, uh, so 25 gold sounds good. <clears throat> Do we have a deal? I let you uh, out, pay you for your service of 25 mm -hmm. gold. You help me get out. Uh, fine. Yes, I, I suppose. I suppose I would do. And in that moment, as you guys are, I uh, just gonna say this. In that moment, I imagine you guys are like shaking, like shaking on it. And as you like let go, the guard comes in. Uh, your pre-cut steak and eggs, sir. Thank you very much. But you feed your prisoners very well. Ah, we're. Uh, Maybe I'll stay here a little longer. <laughs> Uh, we, we do take care of our people, sir. We, we're not cruel. Uh, other than that, he turns to you, Bacchus. Bacchus! Uh, sorry, Mr. Barrel. Um, your, your, uh, your father is requesting you. 
Oh, I'll be uh, back shortly. In the meantime, prepare a cell for him. But make sure to bind both of his hands and feet. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, yes, sir. And uh, as Bacchus leaves, oh. uh, at B... I'm not leaving yet. I'm oh. going to enjoy the meal with him. I'm going to hand slide over the plate. Oh, yeah. Some more. The, uh, the guard uh, will, like, stand there in the room, but you guys do chat back and forth and we talk about stuff. You guys eat, and it's a very pleasant meal. It's actually, so, c considering that you're doing an interrogation room, it is a surprisingly well-cooked and tasteful meal. Mac is probably the this best meal we've had in a while. well-cooked and tasteful meal. <laughs> <laughs> Mac is probably even the best food you've had in a while, considering that you've been, this like, screaming by. This is probably the by. best food I've had in a while. Uh, Alright. <laughs> Alright, after that, I'll head towards the door, let the guard go, uh, have the guard let me out first, and then make sure to bind him real tight. I have a feeling he's going to try something. Oh, tighter. <laughs> you heard him. He wants it tighter. Alright. That's, that's the best you can do. And so the montage will happen of Mac and the guard talking shit to each other and trying to tie him up and he's- I'll say that it, the guard even puts a stool and just sits in front of your cell, Mac, and you guys end up just spending- passing the time talking shit to each other. Uh, Barkus. Wait, uh, he just chills in my cell? Not in your cell, like maybe outside. Like, uh, in, in the hallway, he puts a stool and, like, watches you. Okay. Um, uh, DM, quick question. Yeah. Do I have any allowance gold at all? Yeah. My father would give me. I'll say you How maybe get, me? like, uh... I'll say you may get like a hundred gold a month. It's like a, a stipend every month. How many months has it been so far? How many months? I, I mean, you're. What? I mean, are you keeping stuff in a royal bank? You probably have a lot of money in your royal bank. Like you're rich. You just usually have to get your father's permission to like buy expensive shit first. Right, but I mean, like with the allowance of like every month and so forth, I'm going to be stockpiling and aside to use for my own discretion. But the royal bank, I'm not going to touch unless I really need to. For obvious reasons. You know that, that, that the Royal Bank is not like okay, so l let me re clarify. Your yeah, bank please. account the, the Royal Bank is like the the is not the fucking you know the the kingdom's treasury. The Royal Bank is your it, like, there's like a bank in the kingdom and this is your banking account. This is your royal banking account. So you already have lots of money in there from your father. Now if you take it out, he will definitely notice. <laughs> Let's just say that much. I would say you maybe have uh See, what's a good amount? Two thousand twenty and multiply it. I was gonna say two thousand gold in the bank. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll say he's been doing this for a bit, and a lot of it is, uh, is under like a saving fund that's meant for like when you go when you're old enough to go on your own adventure and you're trained, and so it's put it's it's meant to like buy you a carriage, buy you this, buy you that, buy you guards to go with you, like it's your dad's overprotective kind of thing. Right. Alright, if that's the case. Uh is the bank open right now? Uh it's later in the day, and just like real life banks, they close way too goddamn early. Okay, so if that's the case, I'll probably come early in the morning. I'll leave a note to him saying, Hey, I'm gonna use this to buy myself some funds, but buy myself like some books and whatnot, mm -hmm. scrolls to study. Even though that's not what I'm gonna actually do. Okay. Are you ever gonna go to your father who requested your presence? Yeah, I'm going to head over there right now. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I can just tell him then. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Alright, so... Uh, you're requested in... And this is what's interesting to you. Is... Uh, he... he it, your father is a very private man when it comes to matters with you. He tends to make sure that it's between you and him, that no one else's opinion matters, blah, blah, blah. But he's requested you in the public chambers where he normally sits on his throne. Uh, so I assume you uh, you like to go to the public chambers then? Oh, I said, is my mom around? Oh, is your mom around? to be in the chamber? Um, you have no idea. You were not uh, told or... You assume so as she's the queen. She usually is nearby doing something, but she's not... Uh, you, she could be busy, you never know. Alright, if that's the case, um... Would I by any chance have a pet, like a pet dog or something? Um... 
considering my love for animals and whatnot. I would say maybe there's lots of animals in the key, like in in the in the castle. Like you you have lots of animals that you know, but maybe none that are like super attached to you. Maybe a lot of them like uh, like squirrels that you feed, and they like you because you feed them. But they're none none of them are really like close to you. Gotcha. All right. If that's the case, I'll just head straight to the public chamber. Okay. As you enter, you see uh, your personal royal guards kind of lined up on either side. They all kneel to you and bow. Um, and your, fa your, your father's sitting on his throne. He kind of gestures for you to come in. And as you enter... Uh, <clears throat> Hello, Bacchus. Father. How are you feeling? I hope you've cooled off. I hope you've cooled off. Hmm. Are you? Have you reconsidered your juxtaposition to uh, what I've said and not running away? I don't think I'll be running away, Father. I'm sorry, you cut off at the very first word. Could you please repeat that? I don't think I'll be running away. Okay. Uh, well, that's good. I'm glad. I'm very happy to hear that you you trust that I have the best in mind when it comes to your interests. Even if you don't always agree with my politics, such as the Wizarding Guild, or um, my love for natural magics, or always how I handle the kingdom, but do trust that when it comes to my child, I, I do try my best to have the best in mind. Right. He stands up and he begins to kind of walk to you, and you see your father's... Uh, his age is definitely starting to catch up with him a bit. He's still a powerful man and strong strong-willed and strong-bodied, but you see like there's some liver spots starting to pop up. He's he's got wrinkles setting in. He's he's every now and then you can tell like a muscle will like give out and he has to kind of like, readjust himself. It's it's very clear it's, uh, age is starting to catch up a little bit. And as he walks to you, he he attempts to embrace you in a very awkward like we're both still kind of pissed with each other, but I love you way. I love embrace him. I love you, Bacchus. Love you too, father. Now, <clears throat> I um, I will be uh, having to go back and attend to further activities and uh, continue trying to run this kingdom, as you know. But I will be, I'll be, I, uh, I'll be expecting you to train. Or <laughs> he kind of just shrugs. You, you do whatever you do. You, you're an independent man, and I've always been proud of what you do. Anyways, I don't really have to tell you how to live your life. Just. Please don't leave the kingdom. I know you already said you won't. I just want to reiterate. Other than that, uh, um, for the next bit, I would like your guards to be following you at wherever you go. And as the, he says that, your guards, all six of them, immediately stand up. Father, got a question for you. Yes. You say you want me to be independent, yet you never once let me try and learn the druid ways. You've had me be a sorcerer this whole time. Why is that? You see he's quiet. Like he kinda of just looks down for a second. You see he's like thinking. I I made a as you know, both summer and winter clashed when you were born. And I I asked for that gift. I did not expect the magic to be so chaotic. And because of this, I personally do not know how to change your magic and teach you to harness it into being druidic. That is something I feel that you yourself may have to. If you truly would like to go down that path, my son, you may have to learn to harness your magic more proficiently. Uh, of course. One other thing. I'll be heading to the bank in the morning tomorrow to grab some funds for scrolls and books. Of course. Um, Just to give you a heads up. All right. Uh, do keep aware that I, uh, we do have that one festival coming up, and I know you like to spend a little bit, so uh, do try to keep it roughly maybe 500 gold max. Festival? What festival is it? Uh, it's like a lunar festival. It's, it's one that happens every year. Nothing big. It's... It's nothing that's going to even really impact the story. It's just a general, like, maybe comment from your father about, like, your finances. And how long is that going to be? Uh, and how long? It's going to be, like, maybe a week or two. Okay. If that's the case, 
Yeah, it's like a, it's just a non like it's like a non uh, matter thing. It's, it's one of those things that your dad just says in passing, like uh, because uh, like, you're also royalty, so you're technically an air quote advisor kind of thing. So I'll probably plan to leave after that week's over, like after that uh lunar thing is done. What? What? Why? I mean, since he said I tend to spend a lot of money there, might as well just go there and just buy what I need. Well, it, it, you know, it's you spend a lot of money, like. On the festival, oh. yeah, like like oh. on like gifts and like or not gifts, but like uh, decorations and such. He normally puts gotcha, you like in gotcha. charge of the committee. That's why he's telling you to be careful with the money that he's been giving you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, not not like a it's a festival where you go and you can like potentially buy a magical item. That's not what I was trying to apply. It was just like a nondescript event that your father was alluding to. Okay, that's what I thought you were alluding to. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's All it's right. nothing like that. Um, uh, I guess. Father? Hmm. Where's mom at? Uh... I think in the garden. Alright, I'll head over there to see her. Mm -hmm. Your father, uh, I'll definitely say your mother is inherently a stronger druid than your father. Your father is more of a, a sorcerer druidic mix, but your mother is more of a, a druid, full druid. Fair enough. I'm guessing all of you will start following me around now? Yes! As for dad's instructions. At the same time. Yes, Prince Barrow. Yes, Prince Barrow. Like, all six of them. Okay. I'll just stand my face, just slowly pull my hand down. Alright. Let's get this over with. Might as well go talk to mom before I head to bed. Alright. Uh, with your six guard escort, there is, um, you walk out to the garden, you see your mother. And beautiful as all being, even in her old age, subtle elegant she's not unlike a lot of other people who won't like wear like maybe a lot like elves like to wear makeup or uh dye their hairs and stuff when they get older your mother has embraced the age she likes that you tell your mother has accepted how she looks and the confidence really brings it out in her and it's there's something about her maybe uh, is uh, basically what i'm saying your mom has a high charisma score <laughs> Okay, well, let's say, would you say that she's uh, basically, out of all the women in the kingdom, she still has that appeal to most men and women? Yes. Like, your mom, you, maybe you, you get your looks from your mother. So my mom's a MILF, got it. <laughs> yes, your, your mother's a MILF. <laughs> An elven MILF, my god. <laughs> That's canon now. Oh, um, god. So... Uh, as you approach, it's hard not to see you as you have six armed guards following you. She looks up and as she's holding a very lovely lunar flower, one that itself glows in this, uh, the, the moonlight. Oh, hello, my son. How are you? Hello, mother. I'll walk up to her, give her a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Uh, she returns it and gives you a kiss on the forehead. Uh... What's, uh, what's with the gods? I thought you didn't like having them follow you around. Dad's orders. Ah, of course. Well, uh, she looks at them. Uh, I think the queen's orders are a little bit better. Why don't four of you mess go away? I know Barkus doesn't want that much trouble. And uh, she, she looks at you. Why don't you choose which two you want to keep around? Uh, you can give me... Oops. Why don't you DM me uh, the two... Uh, the, the two that I currently have? Yeah, the two that you like to keep around with you. These are the two that are going to kind of be really with you. And you can tell me of the six you told me before, which one you want. So the two I'm going to really want are these two? All Do you right. want me to send you their stats and whatnot? Or yeah, that's how, yes, DM me all their stats, all that, and you can see out loud, like, this is the name. So the female halfling, Vasilius. Vasilius? No, Vasilis. Vasilis. As well as... Cassia? <laughs> Cassia. That's his name, but we call him Cass because mm -hmm. sounds too feminine for his taste. All right, and so once a Goliath, and could remind me the uh, the Vasilas race again? Half Halfling Rogue. All right, so you have a Halfling and a Goliath with you. <laughs> yep. Hi, right, Prince Barrow. The other. He loves. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, they they sometimes do that. Yeah, in combat, those two have trained to be able to maneuver around each other like that, but. As uh, when they're following you, they won't do that. But during combat, they may attend, uh, uh, <clears throat> occasionally do something like that. Fair enough. I'll say the halfling carries around a spear that she's able to stab people from the bottom of the Goliath from. 
And then she also has a short, yeah, and I say she also has a short sword of her own for if she has to get into melee combat. Uh, other than that, uh, four of them leave. They say, yes, Queen Beryl. They leave, and those two, they stand there, they salute. Thank you for choosing us, Miss uh, Prince Beryl. It is an honor. I mean, I chose you two for a specific reason. Hi. Uh, I need you to stack. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot unsee that happening, but I will not ask them to do such a weird thing. <laughs> Quickly, Goliath and Halfling, get me the mustard from the top shelf. So, do you want me to add a little bit of backstory as to why I chose uh, Silas and uh, Cass? I'm guessing it's because they're the two that are going to be most likely to help you get away. That and more of an emotional tie. Fair enough. Why don't we get into that uh, a little bit later? Why don't we continue with this part right now? Alright, no worries. All good. So, uh, your mother smiles. And she's like, ah, that's better. The peace and comfort of your own personal guard and your mother. Most definitely. Uh, other than that, you and your mom maybe spend some time just going around the garden. She expresses once again that she wishes you'd be more interested in plants than animals. As she adores plants and she thinks you would look so good in a wonderful gown made with leaves. I mean, I have a distaste for plants. Yes, I, I, I understand that, but whenever I see you as a druid, it's very obvious you prefer animals. And you can have a, a all druids have a love for all nature, but we tend to specialize. And I, uh, she kind of just looks at you. And she's like, it's not that I'm disappointed. I just, you know, it would be fun to be a mother son, you know combo I understand mother I'll keep that in mind she kind of does that like mom thing where she tries to act cool like does like like kind of nudges you like come on it'd be cool to go with your mom on adventures and stuff it would be fun I don't see why not someday yeah. we can do that she smiles happily someday Other Other, do I notice anything wrong with her at all like any uh, how do I say this? Uh, remember how I told you that I potentially mm -hmm. may have another? Yes. Um, no. You don't notice anything currently. Uh, maybe... Okay. Yeah, no, no. Th those kind of things don't appear for uh, a while. Especially with elves. Uh, I, I don't know why I had to look up elf uh, gestation periods. I did, and apparently they're longer than humans. <laughs> they're like almost a year. Like, like, like humans are like nine months. Elves are apparently almost a year. <laughs> Well, yeah, so uh, nothing apparent now, but... Um... Elves don't have children often, so they they pretty much view children as, like, um, like a gift from the gods. Yeah. Because since their lives are so long and they have children so rarely, it's like a... Like, as, as long as you're still a child, which is for, like, the first 20 years of a lot of your... I don't, I don't know what it is for elves, but as long as you're still a child, you're, like, you're pretty much royalty. Like, everyone mm -hmm. would know, know the children. Yeah. That's why everybody knows Prince Barrow. It's like, the royal children. And so I'll say, you maybe get this feeling that your mom's glowing slightly. There's something about her that seems cheerful. Okay. Oh, mom, you seem glowier and brighter than usual. Is something going on? Well, I'm not sure yet, as... We all know the goddess may change her mind, but she kind of like holds her stomach slightly. I've been gaining weight. I'm becoming a thick-ass milf. Oh, I'm just kidding. God damn it. <laughs> no, uh, she, she's like, I maybe we might be having um, uh, uh, another sibling. I was just stand there shocked, not expecting that considering what, what's happened. I, I know you're, how you're feeling, Bacchus. I wasn't expecting either. It, but sometimes the goddess ha works in mysterious ways. Right. You are right. I'm just surprised. Me too. I was not I... expecting anything like that. Well, I, me neither. I I thought I was beyond my years of fertility anyways. <laughs> you maybe like kind of cringe a little bit as your mom talks about her f fertility. <laughs> like, eh, mom, don't talk okay. about that. And he's like, but no, but Bacchus, you're an adult. This is a very serious subject. If you're ever going to get married to a woman, you have to have kids early before her fertility leaves. And she starts uh, giving that whole thing about choosing the right woman to become your wife. You only have five. years. starts burning red. 
<laughs> just burning like this is not the conversation I was expecting to have. Cass and uh, Vasil, you see, are kind of awkward as well. They they kind of avert their gazes from your uh, your gut eye contact. Uh, and after a bit, you know, your mother, uh, you know, ends her little tirade about finding the right woman. And really, you should really marry this uh, that one elven princess from you know the kingdom across the other continent. You know, I, I showed you her. Remember Ruba? She's so cute, the Aladrin elf. Out of character, I actually plan on another thing for that, but we'll leave it at, at that for now. Oh, it's, it's just like uh, maybe you're like some of your mom does, where every now and then she'll bring a new suitor, and like you just always turn them down. So every now and then she keeps like, imagine that classic Jewish mom like stereotype, like Bubby, you know, I have a great banker for you, she's quite nice, like that kind of thing. So every now and then your mom will be like, But Bacchus, this is wonderful elf, I know. <laughs> Mom, you'll need to be trying to find someone for me. I'll find someone for myself eventually. She, your mom looks at you for a minute. And it, it, it looks as if she's trying to consider whether she should just say what she's about to say. She's like, Bacchus, you know I love you no matter how, how you are, right? Um, what's the bad news? Are you gay? What do you got to say? I just, I just want to, I, I, I'm not judging. I just want to make sure, are you interested in women? Cause if it's I need to look for a prince for you, I'll, I'll look for a prince. Mom. Yes? <laughs> no. Oh. Trust me, if I was into the same sex, you would both definitely know. Alright, well, remember, elves are one of the most accepting races of that, so you all, you were born perfectly here for that. It, it seems like your mom might want you to be a little gay. <laughs> Considering the types of guards I have. Not surprising. <laughs> considering I have a halfling, a barbarian goliath. Mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, but yeah, so. Moving on from Barkus' sexuality. Um, your mom, <laughs> you and your mom's talk kind of ends. And she gives you a hug and says that. She. As she gives you a hug, she whispers in your ear. Uh. I know that you've been having a talk with your father. And if you do leave, I won't be mad. I'll give her a tight smile and whisper back. Thank you. I'm proud of you. I love you. I love you too, Mom. And if you do leave, I'll make sure I'll try my best to keep your father from looking for uh for you right away. She nods her head and uh <clears throat> walks away, you know, very, very solemnly, like, she, in her heart, she knows that you may still be trying to do something, and so, she walks away and enjoys the garden. Oh, yeah, there is no hiding anything from her, she always figures out what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. She's, I'd say, the more understanding between the two. Yep. She yeah. even knew you were gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Uh, so maybe in another timeline. <laughs> maybe in another timeline where you're uh, Cyrus is sex slave and everything's cloned. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um. But yeah. So, so the evening. The yes, he is. They are. <laughs> so the evening winds down to an end. Um. You you find uh. What would you like uh, like to do, Barker? So uh, I'm going to kind of like fast forward here. It's going to get everything prepared. Uh, I'm guessing you're going to go to the bank. You're going to get uh, however, how much gold would you like to uh, get from the bank before you leave? So before that happens, uh, during the night before I head to bed, I'm going to plan out the stuff for that lunar thing. Since I'm going to be an advisor, just make it as minimal as possible in terms of gold spending. So it seems mm -hmm. like I have the work done, submit it to my father so he knows that I at least did something to make it seem like I'm generally not going to leave even though I'm still leaving. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to grab about 325 gold. Alright. I'll say that does not trigger his like a little alarm he put. So I wasn't going to say it until after you said how much but he had a little alarm to make sure you didn't extract too much gold. <laughs> yeah I had a set of metals. Actually you know what? How much? So no, was... no, 325 should be enough. Alright so you extract 325 and you uh, you get all your stuff ready. 
you talk to Cass and uh, Vasilla, I'm guessing, because they're like you're they're following you around and they don't say anything, they don't question you, but you can kind of tell they're they're noticing you're gathering stuff and getting a large amount of gold that has nothing to do with the Lunar Festival. <laughs> Yes. This is between the three of us. Of course, bro. You know what I'm about to do. Vasilla nods her head. I was aware since your mother hugged you. <laughs> Cass goes, huh? Wait. What? Wait, what, what's going on? I'll walk up to him, pat him on the shoulder. Just follow Vasilla's instructions, you'll understand. Alright, I'll serve by you loyally, Prince Barrow. Of course. And then while that's happening, uh, I guess I'll go to the prison. All right. So I'm gonna say. Hey, Mac. I'm gonna say this do is probably. So while while he's doing all that, there was a couple things I wanted to do in the in the by cell. Absolutely. As I was gonna go to is that oh, Mac. Right. Is there anything you would like to do in your cell? <laughs> As you're just I'm basically yeah. The guards are like even the guard who's like watching you isn't there the entire time. They're like throughout the night shifting so there's plenty of time to get maybe 10 odd minutes where there's no one there okay i want to basically my my goal is to just get out of my bonds but not leave um so i want to just whenever i can file the thing down until it's sharp enough to cut my bonds mm -hmm. but stay in my chair oh easy i'll, I'll say that if that's all you want to do no rolls just you're going to take the time over the next bit you just lock pick it get it out you're completely uh okay. Yes. I thought I had him both his hands and feet bound, so how would he be able to do that? He already had it on him. I'm reaching my pocket. Yeah, he also already had it on him. Uh, fair enough. I thought, okay, never mind. I yeah. didn't specify how I wanted his hands and feet bound. Well, it also doesn't that even matter how you did it. He still can move his arms around and it's in his pocket, so he could, he's, he could shift it pretty easily to get to his hand and just cut the binds. Okay. I'll send you an image of what I had in mind later, but yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. Um... Also, no offense, but any kind of specialty not, your guards would not know how to do, neither would you. They're, like, that kind of stuff is survival-based, so you wouldn't be able to do anything that's, like, intense. Or kinky. This would have been the second option. Basically just have them <laughs> sprawled head against the wall. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no, he, he, I, I could still see him getting through that somehow. But yes, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, it's Mac. He, I'm gonna give it to him. He's fairly skilled, and I'm giving him a large time frame to kind of get it done. So... I'll say eventually you're able to get free, and the uh, the next guard isn't the one that did that to you, so he's not like he just cr he's not aware oh, that you should be tied up. Yeah, uh, the, only the guard that Barkus specifically requested knows that you're supposed to be tied up. Kind of like um, lean back in my chair, cross my legs, and put my hands behind my head and take a nap. Yeah, I'll say while Barkus gets everything done. The bone again, though. Awesome. I will say while Barkus that you get fed another few delicious meals in a weird way you're you, you do contemplate not leaving it's really yummy it's like uh el for the morning it's elven bread with a very wonderful ham steak then for lunch it's like a very nice like almost casserole it, you you suspect they might have an actual chef who cooks for the prisoners and i'll say you notice they don't have that many prisoners either interesting i also one more thing i want to try to befriend one of the guards Absolutely. You uh, just chat them up a little bit. Maybe, uh, how would you like to do it? Because they are a little hesitant because you are a prisoner. Okay, well, is, are any of them doing anything other than just watching me uh, with a blank stare? Uh, I'm looking for something to start a conversation. I'll say maybe while you're eating your lunch, that wonderful casserole, uh, the one that serves it to you, uh, instead of leaving like the other ones, he turns around and goes to this desk that's nearby, and he starts filling out some paperwork. So, uh, what you got going on um, over there? What you working on? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, uh, ah, screw it. Might as well keep a little company. I suppose he gets a little lonely down here. Uh, but not, not friendly, just conversational. You're not oh, going to give you any... Yeah. I understand, I understand. Uh, I'm a, I'm a low-life criminal. Mm. Uh, either way, I'm, I'm just filling out some paperwork, you know, uh, got a note, uh, when we brought you meals to make sure you are fed, and, you know, we, we make sure all prisoners are fed down here, so we have a, a list to make sure everyone who is in a cell gets a meal. Very organized. You guys are certainly organized. I will give that to you. That is a, uh, that is a, um, that is one of your strong suits. Ah, 
You can thank uh, Prince Barrow for that. While his father kept the kingdom running, he made sure any possible inhumane activities amongst the kingdom was sorted out. That's interesting. He, tell me about Prince Barrow. He, he seems to be something of a celebrity in addition to his own. <laughs> I don't know if you know how elven royalty works. They don't exactly have kids very much, so when one kid comes around, they tend to be uh, a big deal. And Mr. Barrow, or, oh, sorry, praise be to the uh, the kingdom, Prince Barrow. He, he actually does like a little bow. You tell, even though you, you've been watching Vargas, you can tell he does not command respect. It does not matter if people still give him respect. And he um, he tell, he goes on to list off various different feats that like uh, Barkas done, like organizing, um, you know, uh, crime laws, going around and do. Uh, he goes and checks out crime scenes. He tries to root out uh, corrupt, um, you know, police officers. He's uh, makes sure that guards are properly trained in uh, non-lethal, like subduing stuff like that. He's been trying to redo their little criminal like justice empire here. <laughs> So we must lead a uh, pretty happy life here, then? Ah, uh, well, I, we've been keeping a fairly nice life, I will say. Uh, having our our uh, program that we try to teach people to live in society has kept a lot less prisoners here. A lot less angry prisoners, I will say. Which does lead a lot less guard stabbing, if you catch my drift. No, of course, of course. Uh, I heard something about his... um. You know, before I came here, there were some um, rumors in the street about his brother. You know, the whole thing with the uh, night flower yeast thing. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I All I know is that the, the royal gods know that um, his brother, something has happened. And of course, when a, a sibling dies of a royal family, it is public news. But uh, of what's happened, I uh, only King Beryl, uh, Prince Beryl, and... Uh, his royal gods know what happened exactly. In fact, if I remember correctly, only King Beryl and uh, the a few, like one or two of the royal gods were even there when the incident happened. Interesting. Must have just been rumors then. Maybe. You have, um, what do you do when you're not working anyway? Surely you don't spend all your time here. <laughs> I'll say um, this guard ends up slowly, not fully opening up, but you kind of become a little buddy-buddy with him. Uh, if you like, you can roll me a... Uh, either performance or uh, persuasion or even general charisma and just see how well you kind of buddy up, buddy up with him as he just talks about his daily day-to-day -day stuff alright persuasion is a 14 yeah you uh, I'm not going to have it roll back this is generally just how you do it and you do a fairly damn good job even with him trying to actively keep non-friendly you every now and then pull up a personal subject like oh are you married i see a ring blah 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 stuff like that like you pull up something that tends to loosen up his strings I do, actually that's i was gonna ask that is he married does he have a family kids yeah you learn that he has like a, a wife and he has uh, a young boy named johan okay and what's his name uh uh uh, my name is, uh, Alexander. Alright. Yes. Other than that, I'll say time passes and Barkus, you're kind of prepared to leave. Uh, maybe it's later on, you got your gear ready, uh, you got everything set in place. Your dad shouldn't notice, you've got the, you know, the moon festival set up for next week, you've got max stuff ready, you know that the, uh, there's not that many, uh, Oh, how's it? Guards on a Friday. And you know that you're about to uh, switch shifts. So you know that there's no guards currently there. Mac, this is the normal 10 minute period where there's no guards. Uh, the normal like shift change. You're le uh, leaning back, taking a nap maybe, enjoying it. When uh, Barkus... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. If I do hear him speak or see him come in, I want to like hide behind the door so when it opens it looks like an empty cell. Uh, it's like a, it's not like a door like it's not like the interrogation room was a door. It's a, a, just a, like a gated thing. So it's there's nowhere to really hide. Yeah Okay, well, then I'll just um, is there like a bed? Yeah, there's like a little uh, comfortable cot. Like, draw out and look really comfortable Yeah, you you are comfortable. It's very nice And if you like that video and like to see more content, please drop a like and subscribe to Wolfer 28 or Give us a follow and a rating on both Spotify and iTunes as Bardic Logs. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you next time.